Oh, Gilbert, it's so nice to be back at Ingleside again. Well, I thought that medical conference would never end. <laughs> but now we can finally spend some real time with our family. The Blythes are back. Oh, can we go play in Rainbow Valley? Rainbow Valley? Yes, it's a sun-dappled world of adventure that's all our own. That sounds kind of... Splendid! You children run along and have fun! Yay! Why, Mrs. Dr. Dear, I do believe that's Mrs. Cornelia Elliot coming up the laneway. I'm glad you're back, Anne, because I've got some exciting news. We have a new minister. His name is Mr. John Meredith. Really? What's he like, Cornelia? Well, he's a widower with four children. He's nice and well-educated, but oh, Anne, dearie, he has no common sense. I hope he's at least gotten a housekeeper. That's not exactly the word I'd use. He's gotten old Aunt Martha, a cousin on his mother's side, I believe. She's half blind, very cranky, and a terrible cook. Oh dear, she sounds almost as bad as Aunt Mary. Hey, no one's as bad as Aunt Mary. Don't even joke about that. Well, anyway, I'm off to spread the word. For the foreseeable future, the only ones anyone will be talking about is the Meredith family. And the Blythe family, of course. We're in for all sorts of adventures, I'm sure. Such as? Well, Jem's going to fry trout and bring me some Mayflowers. Walter has a toothache and will probably prophesy about World War I. Hmm. Oh yes, and you and Susan and I can gossip about people that nobody cares about. As I was saying, the only ones anyone will be talking about is the Meredith family. But don't worry, Anne. Just let us know when you have your act together. What, what just happened? These stories are all about me, aren't they? Apparently not. John? Uh, oh, very well, thank you. John, breakfast! Uh, eh? What? Your breakfast is ready! Uh, sorry, Martha, I'm still in the middle of planning my next sermon. Uh, tell you what, give me a shout when breakfast is ready. That ship has already sailed, John! Jerry, Faith, you're a coral! Get your breakfast! I warned you to keep that rooster out of the house! He's not just a rooster, he's my pet, and his name is Adam. Our house is no place for a rooster, unless it's in a roasting pan. Get it out! Oh, fine. Go on, Adam. Go outside. So what's for breakfast, Aunt Martha? Oh, lumpy porridge and blue milk again? How can milk even be blue? Oh, I want some cream on mine. You can't have any cream. I gave it all to my cat. Well, I'm tired of porridge. When I have a house of my own, I won't have a single flake of porridge in it. It's not so bad if you don't eat the bird bits. Don't you start with me. The porridge burns if you leave it for a minute. And I had to set the table, didn't I? We can help you set the table next time. No, you'd only break the dishes. Oh, then we can help you stir the porridge. I don't want you kids messing up my kitchen. Wouldn't be any messier than the rest of the house. This house is spick and span. What are you talking about? Aunt Martha, if you could see properly, you'd know it was a pigsty. That's quite enough out of you, Jerry. You always have to make this about my son, don't you? Well, if you don't appreciate what I do around here, then I'm off to take my morning nap. Well. <sighs> An absent-minded father and a blind housekeeper. Life's just a paradise in the Meredith Mance. Well, what if we clean it up ourselves? You mean do Aunt Martha's dirty work for her? At least the house won't be dirty anymore. You know, that's not such a bad idea. If she can't do it, maybe we can. Okay then, 
Let's start with the rugs. Where can we beat them out? How about the graveyard behind the house? Nobody should mind a little extra dust in the graveyard, right? Let's do it! Marshall, Marshall, come quickly! What is it, Cornelia? Did the Blythes do something interesting? No, never mind them. It's the Meredith children. They shook out their dusty rugs in the graveyard behind their house, right over Hezekiah Pollock's tombstone. <laughs> That's probably the most interesting thing to happen to him in years. Oh, Marshall, I'm going to have a word with them. After I tell the neighbours, of course. I, of course. Well, I just caught an earful from Cornelia. Apparently, it's rude to shake out dusty rugs in the graveyard. Wow, thank goodness you didn't let me dump the table scraps there, or we really would have caught it. This isn't fair. We went out of our way to do something good. It'll be all right. Once people understand it was just a mistake. Don't bet on it. If Cornelia knows, then by now the whole town's probably heard her story. And we can't apologize to every last person, can we? Wait, maybe we can. I thought young Faith was very brave in church today. I'm not sure that's the word I would use. She actually got up on the platform and tried to publicly apologize for the incident in the graveyard. <laughs> yeah. And her father didn't even notice. He just continued on with his sermon as if nothing had happened. That father of theirs is half the problem. And if he doesn't get his head out of the clouds, those children will grow up to be just as careless and impractical as he is. Ah, it's a pity he doesn't remarry. Those children need a proper parent. What about that music teacher, Rosemary West? She could look after those kids without any trouble. Oh, on second thought, never mind. That's a terrible thing to wish on Rosemary. Hmm, agreed. Well, try to look at the funny side of things, Cornelia. Do you remember the title of John's sermon today? Oh, yes. Well, I suppose that was a little ironic. How to bring up children! Hey, everyone! I found something in the hayloft. Is it a bag? Uh, no. It's a girl. Aww. Oh, hello. And what's your name? I'm Mary Vance. What were you doing in our hayloft? Well, that's a bit of a long story. You might as well tell us, Mary. We don't mean any harm. Very well. I'm an orphan, you see. Mrs. Wiley from Oberalba hired me to keep house. But she was awful. She beat me and starved me and worked me to death, so I ran away. That wasn't a very long story. No, I guess it wasn't. Anyway, I've been on the run ever since. That's how I ended up in your A-loft. Well, now that you're here, why don't you stay with us at the manse? That's awful kind of you, but I don't want to be a bother. Oh, it's no bother. We have a spare room you can use. No! Remember the rat's nest? Oh, yeah. Okay, the attic then. You could stay in the attic. Won't your folks be put out having another mouth to feed? <laughs> Are you kidding? Our father won't even notice an extra dinner guest. He probably wouldn't notice if the manse burned down around his ears. Well, then I guess I won't refuse free room and board. Lead the way. Yes, it has the dishes, always the dishes. Look at this place. I have to clean it. Oh, there you are. Hey, but hey, who's that then? Uh, this is Mary Vance, a friend of ours from Over Harbor. She's going to stay with us for a little while. Oh, she is, is she? Have you asked your father first? Um, yes, I, I think it was, um, I believe it was Aristotle who said, um, oh, or was it Socrates? Um, I think, John! Hmm? Huh? Uh, oh, uh, just, just leave it on the stack with the rest of them, Martha. John, are you okay with a visitor? Oh, uh, of course, Martha. You can come and go as you please. Yes, um, Socrates once said, um, yes, sir. Uh... Oh, never mind, you can stay. What difference does it make anyway? Thanks, Martha. Come on, let's get the attic ready. Hmm. I say there, what are you cooking? None of your business! Now see here, 
I'm sick and tired of you complaining about my cooking. I'm telling you, these potatoes are awful. Nonsense! I've been cooking potatoes since before you were born. Yes, with strips of skin hanging off of them and half boiled as usual. Impertinent child! Get out of my kitchen at once! Fine! Meow. My, but it'd be nice to go to your funeral. Oh! Oh, it gets on my nerves to see good victuals spoiled. Old Martha has no idea what she's doing in the kitchen and she won't let anyone else help her. I had just about enough foolishness for one day. Good day. I am Bertha Marilla of Life, but you may call me Rilla. Oh, and you may call me Mary Vance. You think you're something, don't you? All dressed up like a doll. I'm dressed up like a proper young lady. I see. What have you got there in the basket? Strawberries for Mr. Meredith. All right, give them to me and I'll see that he gets them. Oh no, Susan said I wasn't to give them to anybody but Mr. Meredith or Aunt Martha. You're not giving these to Martha. She just ruined them. I'll feed them to a stupid cat. You have to give them to me. I will not. You're not the boss of me, Mary Vance. Oh, that's it. This will teach you to be a snob. Have some of this. Oh, what's this then? Strawberries. Lucky day. Marshall, Marshall. What is it, Cornelia? You know that girl who's been staying at the mess? Yes. Well, she's chasing little Rill of Life with a codfish. Now this I have to see. They're coming right into our yard. Mr. and Mrs. Elliot, save me! That's far enough, young lady. And put down that codfish, for goodness sake. Now, the Meredith family has been very kind to you, wouldn't you say? Yes, ma'am. Well, then where do you get off insulting and chasing one of their little friends? I guess it was rotten to me. I don't know what possessed me, then. Of all things, why did you chase her with a codfish? I guess it was just dandy, sir. <laughs> I like this one, Cornelia. Why don't you try talking some sense into her? Very well. You may go home now, Rilla. This girl won't bother you any more. Hm, the hussy! Now, who are you and where do you come from? I'm from Over Arbor, ma'am. Mrs. Wiley hired me to keep house, but she treated me just awful, so I ran away. And then the Merediths took me in. You say you ran away from Mrs. Wiley? Yes, ma'am. She was a proper taskmaster, I don't mind telling you. It's a bit strange that she hasn't been looking for you. I didn't think of that, but you're right. It's not like her to just let something go. I used to live in Over Arbor myself. I'll go there tomorrow and see what I can find out. Oh, I don't care what's happened. I'm not going back to Mrs. Wiley. If you have been ill-used, Mary, then we won't force you to go back. But you can't stay at the manse forever, you know. Oh, and why ever not? Well, for one thing, John Meredith is an absent-minded twit. He isn't capable of raising the four children he already has. Did, did he become like that after his wife died? No, he's always been a twit. It's just more obvious now. Anyway, go back to the manse for today. We'll try to sort this all out tomorrow. Okay, ma'am. Uh, goodbye, sir. Goodbye, ma'am. Thank you. <sighs> I worry about that man, Cornelia. Well, if I were you, I'd worry more about those children of his. If he spent as much time on them as he spent on writing sermons or studying philosophy, he'd be father of the year. What's the news, Cornelia? Just tell me, I can take it. Mary, it's the most amazing thing. Mrs. Wiley was found dead in her bed the very morning after you ran away. Oh, joy! Uh, yes. It seems she'd had a bad heart for years. Anyway, the neighbors all assumed that she'd sent you to her cousin, which is why nobody was looking for you. I see. But what's to become of me now? I suppose I'll be sent back to Oaktown Asylum. Not necessarily. Marshall and I have decided to take you on ourselves, if you're willing. Really? Certainly. We have a great big house, and Marshall has always wanted me to have some help. It will be a splendid place for you. Only you'll have to behave yourself. I sure will. Wow, to think that an unwanted orphan like myself could end up being raised by a pair of stern but caring guardians. That 
sounds oddly familiar somehow. I'll have to ask Anne about it the next time I see her. At any rate, I guess that's settled. Eh? Uh, what's settled? Is this about the birch cups again? Birch cups? What are you talking about? You know, for the, um... In the, um... Uh, oh, I forgot what it was. Never mind that, Mr. Meredith. I've decided to adopt this girl. Adopt her? Yes. She'll be well-dressed, well-educated and trained. She'll have a good home and a good upbringing. I'll treat her as if she was my own. I... I thank you for your kind intentions, but I cannot give you my child. Why, Mr. Merrick... I'm sorry, but it's entirely out of the question. I'm sure you could give her many worldly advantages, but that would never compensate my daughter for the loss of her father's love and care. I ain't your daughter. You're not? Uh, are you sure? Of course I am. I'm Mary Vance. I... I just assumed. I mean, you're always at our house, and you eat, you eat meals with us, and... You, you're you my daughter, though, right? Yes. Oh, good. Jolly good. Great news, Una. The Elliots are going to adopt me. That's wonderful, Mary. I don't know what's to become of you youngsters when I'm gone. Anyhow, do try to keep the house a little tidy. I'll try. I'm going to miss her, Jerry. It's probably for the best. She was always pulling focus. Good morning, Una. Shoo! Please go away! Oh dear, I just wanted one little scene, but if you really don't want me around... Oh, not you, Walter. I was talking to the pigs. That's definitely a very normal thing to do. Uh, right. Anyway, these aren't even our pigs. They belong to the Drews, but they're always wandering over here. They do make an awful mess of your front lawn. Have you tried everything you can think of to get rid of them? Well, yes, I suppose so. Oh dear. Then I'm fresh out of ideas. <laughs> You're a strange one, Walter. Mother says I'm unique. House. You mean we ride the pigs back to the Drews? Well, of course. What could possibly go wrong? Well, uh, I don't know. Even better, we could race them. Uh, okay, that actually sounds like fun. Then let's go! Marshall, come quickly! I'm a little busy right now, Cornelia. You can't miss this. Una Meredith and Walter Blythe are riding pigs through town. What? I'm coming, I'm coming. Where? Oh, I'm afraid you missed it. Oh, for the love of... I miss all the fun out here. Where'd they find a pair of pigs anyway? I'm sure it was those foolish pigs from the Drew Farm. They've been plaguing the neighbourhood all summer. Ha! Well, I reckon they won't come near the manse again at least. Oh, Cornelia, can I ride a pig too? Nice try, young lady, but you and Walter will soon regret their little joyride. The other children will scandalize them for this. You see if they don't. Exactly. Young children are the worst. Hey! Uh, no offense, Mary. If John Meredith would just do a proper job looking after his children, well, there's nothing for it, I suppose. I'll bet Rose Mary West would make a good mum for the Merediths. Do you think there's any chance she'd marry John? Oh, please, Mary. I'd be less surprised if one of those pigs sprouted wings and flew back to the manse. Pig girl, pig girl. Let's just ignore him. You hold your tongue, Dan Reese. Oh, hello, Miss Walter. Cowardy custard. Those insults are stupid. You're stupid. Well, you're a... A coincidence! I'm a what? You heard me! You're a coincidence! Walter, I don't think that's actually an insult. What? No, it has to be! I can't waste my one shining moment of bravery! Tough luck, Walter. 
You failed because your friend is a pig girl. You're the pig girl, you coincidence head! There, had enough? Uh, uh, uh. Say it, say that Una Meredith isn't a pig girl. Una Meredith isn't a pig girl. And I'm not a coward. You're not a coward. And you're a coincidence. Walter, quit while you're ahead. All right then, you can go. Ugh. Thank you, Walter. Dan was the real coward. I just saw what happened. That was a very brave thing you did, sticking up for faith. I'm Yuna. Exactly. I'm proud of your son. I'm not your son. You're, you're not? No, I'm Walter Blythe. Well, then who's my son? You have two sons. Two sons? Jerry and Carol. Two sons? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I'm so sorry, you know. We've gotten used to it. <laughs> Martha, what happened to the fish we caught yesterday? I thought we were going to eat them for lunch. My cat needed them more than you do. This is ridiculous. You love that cat more than you love us. And we spent hours catching those fish. I had a feeling you'd complain, as usual. That's why I have a special surprise for you tonight. We're having chicken. Yay! Finally a decent meal. Yeah, I was getting really tired of mutton. Thanks, Martha. Absurd. We're going to cook the rooster. You mean Adam? Of course I mean Adam. <laughs> oh, and Martha, how could you? Listen, the butcher had no discounted mutton this week, and we have to have something. And Martha, you can't kill Adam. You just can't. I'll go without meat today if it means we don't have to eat Adam. Oh, really, Faith? You can be such a child sometimes. <laughs> What's that? Somebody's killed Aunt Martha? I'm right here, John. Of course not. Oh, thank goodness. I don't know where we'd get another housekeeper. Well, that's an end of it. We're cooking Adam, and I don't want to hear another word about it. Don't worry. You won't. But Jerry! Get everyone and meet me in the hayloft. Aunt Martha's gone too far this time. Jerry, we can't let her kill Adam. I agree. I've got nothing personal against Aunt Martha, but, well, I do. She's always mean to us. She's not a very good housekeeper. She's a terrible cook, too, and she never lets us help. Okay, fine. So we do have something personal against Aunt Martha. My point is, this is the last straw. We need a plan to save Adam and get rid of Aunt Martha. Are, are you sure that's not taking things too far? It's either that, or continue forever with our frustrating, episodic lives. When you put it that way, let's do it. Oh, I have an idea. We could feed a robin until it becomes so strong and vicious that it eats Aunt Martha. That's an interesting idea, Carl. But Aunt Martha's planning to cook Adam today. Creating a monster robin would take too long. Too bad. It probably would have worked. Okay, then. Let's go for Aunt Martha's weak spot. Her cooking. Her cooking? Yes, it's her most touchy subject, right? She's always been very defensive about it. Well, then. Let's make this a meal she'll never forget. Oh, I love being part of a conspiracy. Faith, I think you're on to something. Here's what we're going to do. So it's almost time to kill your rooster, Faith. You're all hard, Aunt Martha. Why, thank you. Now, where did I put that axe? I think I saw it in the cupboard earlier. The cupboard? Who put it there? You must have, Aunt Martha. We wouldn't mess around with your kitchen. Indeed. Well then... No! This is enormous fun! 
Oh, look at the cupboards. Oh dear, how frightening. Aunt Martha, use the broom to nudge it out of the house. Yes, of course. Uh, the broom. Yeah, where did I put it? I think it's in the closet. Right, the closet. No! Snakes! The closet is full of snakes! There he is. We couldn't find any snakes. Maybe you can gather them up in the dustpan. Yes, yes, of course. The... Wait a minute! You're responsible for all this, aren't you? Yes, of course you are! Wait, don't you want to see what's lurking near the dustpan? Quiet, Carl. Martha, we just don't want you to kill Adam. You horrible little legends should be whipped within an inch of your lives! Oh, just wait until your father gets in with this! John! John! I want a word with you! I? Uh, no, I, I don't think it'll rain today, Martha. Are you even listening to me? Those horrid little brats of yours have just played a cruel prank on me! What? Some rats played a prank on you? No! I'm talking about your children, John! Ha, huh, good, good, good. That's as it should be. Uh, let me know when they're home, okay? Oh, that is it! That is the very last straw! I am happy with this place! Aunt Martha, look behind you! Don't you dare interrupt me! You and your childish pranks! I work my fingers to the bone, and all I get are complaints, complaints, complaints! Well, I'm leaving! As for you wretched little urchins, I hope you realize just how big a mistake you... Wait... What? Ah, the fireplace! My vintage petticoats and flames! <laughs> Why didn't you tell Aunt Martha she was standing too close to the fireplace? She told me not to interrupt. Should, should we help her or something? Nah, I I'm sure she's fine. And so is Adam. Oh, Marshall, you just missed it. The most incredible thing happened at the manse. Oh, Cornelia, you need to be careful about blowing things out of proportion. Every time one of those Meredith children makes the slightest mistake, it's always the most incredible thing. Martha just ran out of the manse with her backside on fire, jumped in the creek, and then stormed away. Okay, I take it back. That's pretty incredible. Did someone Say Aunt Martha's fanny's on fire? Don't use slang, dearie. At any rate, you missed it. Martha's already put herself out in the creek. Aww, I wish I'd seen that. Look on the bright side, Mary. I'm pretty sure she's leaving for good. Maybe now the mayor of the children can get a decent meal. All right, let's call this meeting to order. Wait. Why are we meeting in the graveyard? Yeah, it is kind of weird. And our neighbors keep telling us that they don't like it. Well, we don't have a backyard and we have to meet somewhere. What about the hayloft? Sure, whatever. But right now, we've got a bigger problem to deal with. We're always getting into scrapes, and because of that, our neighbors think we're bad. Oh, aren't we? No, we're not bad. Or anyway, we don't mean to be. What we need is a way to stop getting into so many scrapes. That's easier said than done, Jerry. We can't just make our problems go away. Nonsense! We made Aunt Martha go away, didn't we? Yeah! Actually, I think that's one of the reasons why our neighbors think that we're bad. Right. Okay, fair enough. But this is the day that changes. What I'm proposing is a good conduct club. A good conduct club? How does that work? It's simple. We meet once a week and punish ourselves every time we do something wrong. Ew, it sounds like fun! Wait, no it doesn't. What's the fun of punishing ourselves? Don't you see? If we face bad consequences for bad behavior, then we'll be less likely to do it in the future. That means fewer scrapes. Wait, isn't this something our father should already be doing with us? Yes it is. And how's that working out so far? He has a point. <sighs> sure, I'm in. We already do our own cooking and cleaning. Why not do our own parenting, too? That's the spirit. This will be the club to bring ourselves up, seeing as there's nobody else to do it. Does meeting in the graveyard count as bad behavior? 
Okay, I get it. No more meetings in the graveyard. Now, I want everyone to come back next week with something bad they've done, and we can discuss appropriate punishments. Yay! The Good Conduct Club is now in session. We'll start with you, Faith. What do you have to confess? Well, I went to church with bare legs. That's scandalous! I'm sorry, but if anyone had asked me, I'd have explained that I gave my stockings away to poor Lyda Marsh out of charity. Oh, what sort of punishment should she have, Jerry? Gosh, I'm... Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I know everyone was offended, but it seems kind of mean to punish you for charity. We could still punish her for being heedless enough not to keep any stockings for herself. Hey, whose side are you on? Okay, how about a compromise? You can write an apology in the paper and explain what happened. That'll set things right, and no one will be upset anymore. Yeah, only insecure people would be upset by an apology in the newspaper. Oh, fine. You're a good sport, Faith. Okay, um, Yuna, do you want to go next? Well, Mary Vance told Carl and me a scary ghost story, and then we saw a bellowing white sheet and thought it was a ghost. But it was just old Mrs. Stimson gathering her laundry from the line. Um, I'm, I'm just not sure that getting scared is actually a bad deed. Our shouting really scared Mrs. Stimson, though. I don't know. I I'd rather punish Mary Vance for telling you those stupid ghost stories. I know. We can go without food until I pass out from hunger. I think our punishment should be a little less life-threatening. Aww. How about this? Carl and Yuna sit in the graveyard until midnight so that they learn not to be afraid. Hey, that might actually work. What do you think, guys? Does that sound fair? I ran away first. So it's not Eunice's fault. I'll do it alone. I'll sit and sit in that graveyard, even if it's windy and rainy, and I catch a death of cold. Uh, on second thought, Carl, never mind the punishment. Just don't listen to Mary Vance anymore, okay? Okay! Now, I think that's settled. Who's next, then? I think you should go next, Jerry. Me? Well, what did I do? Confess! 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 Um, okay, uh, how about this? I heard the neighbors complain about us singing out here last night, and that was my idea. What? It was barely dark when we finished, and we still got complaints? Maybe we didn't sing very well. Okay, this is ridiculous. Maybe the real problem here is our useless busybody neighbors. Hear, hear. Should we punish Faith for calling our neighbors useless busybodies? No, guys. Faith is right. And I have to say, this whole idea is a lot harder than I thought it would be. Let's go back inside and do some brainstorming in the house. It's not all bad, Jerry. With Martha gone, at least we can make our own snacks. Sorry, Jerry, but I think the Good Conduct Club is a bust. Yeah, we might as well face it. What we really need is an actual parent. Or a swift and unexpected resolution to all our problems. Or both. Uh, um, who's there? Hello, children. It's me, Rosemary West. Isn't that a space? Maybe, but she's also a music teacher. What can we do for you? Well, to make a long story short, I wondered if you children could use a new parent. Oh, could we ever? Yes, and I'm sure you do a lovely job, but in good conscience, we really can't let you marry our father. Oh, goodness, children. I'm not going to marry your father. Why not? Do you have a selfish sister who made you promise not to marry unless she did because she didn't want to live alone? <laughs> Why, what a ridiculous notion. No, um, <laughs> I'm not going to marry your father because he's an absent-minded twit. Yeah, I agree. Wait, if you aren't going to marry our dad, then how are you going to be our new parent? Nothing simpler. I just figured, why don't you children come and live with me? But won't our father be upset when he notices we're gone? I think you just answered your own question. Hey, she's right. Father will never notice anyway. In that case, we'd love to stay with you. We promise we won't be any trouble. And I promise I'll be a good stepmother to you. Of course you will. 
Marionette says that all stepmothers are evil, but why should I listen to her? Why, indeed. I promise to teach you and help you all I can. From now on, you'll have a clean house, proper meals, and an attentive parent. Yay! Hello, children, son, uh, sons, daughters. I I wonder where they could be. Perhaps, perhaps they've already grown up and moved out. My word, it does happen fast. Ha! Huh. Great success! And they say parenting is hard. Mr. Meredith! Mr. Meredith! Oh, hello. Uh, not my son. Yes, I, I just realized this story is called Rainbow Valley, but we didn't have any scenes in Rainbow Valley. Oh, dear. Well, what are we going to do? Well, uh, I, um, we can, uh, mm, Roll credits! Right, sermon planning time. How to bring up children, part two. Let's see. Now, when we need a good advice for anything, I'm sure we all turn to the same man, Aristotle. Yes, and uh, Aristotle, yeah, uh, he had some, some wonderful advice for bringing up children. And, oh, now wait, was it was that Socrates? Aristotle? Well, let's, um, let's just split the difference and make it Plato. Yes. Uh, some of Plato's most important teachings about raising children uh, come from his his own experience. Uh, where, um, wait, D did Plato have any children of his own? Um, uh, oh, ha, it's silly me. Uh, of course, Plato had children. How else could he have such wonderful advice on raising them? Obviously. Okay. Yes. Anyway, um, when when we think of Plato's many wonderful years of uh, child raising experience. We cannot help but be reminded of this topic's discourse, which is, um, uh, um, uh, oh dear, I've forgotten what it was.